Welcome, this is Charles and today we're going to be taking apart a Vivitar 285 high voltage strobe. There's several reasons why you might want to take this apart. You might want to replace the capacitor inside if it becomes defective. You might want to uh, put a new hot shoe on if it breaks off. This, has been, this one has been replaced. Or you might want to replace the strobe. Or you might be just curious of what's inside of one. So today that's what we're going to do take it apart. A word of caution, inside this strobe is a high voltage capacitor that can carry a lethal dose of electricity even if the unit is not turned on or there's no batteries in the unit. One way to discharge the capacitor is to make sure the sensor is on manual or just remove the sensor, turn the strobe on, let it build up a charge when the green light is flashing. Then you can discharge the strobe and immediately afterwards turn the strobe off. That helps drain most of the charge out of the capacitor. But once we open it up, I will show you another way that we can discharge the capacitor safely. Okay, before we open the strobe, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the batteries are out. Opening the battery compartment, taking them out. We will now remove screws, two screws up front on either side. There's also two screws here and one screw over here and two screws on the end. Let's start by removing these two screws. I like putting my screws up at the top there so I know where they came from and in what order I took them out. Now turn over the end and take out the two screws. The hot shoe will lift off. You can take the screws out. One important note is that the screws come in different sizes and styles. One of the distinctions is the type of thread. The long screw on the top has a coarse screw as well as the small screw on the bottom. These are used for plastic. This screw has a fine thread and it is used for metal. It screws into the metal shoe plate. Now we're ready to take the disc off. One of the ways that I find to soften up the glue that's under the disc is to heat it up with a heat gun. I've already done that with this one. And then you can get, use a pick or a small screwdriver, get under the end. And invariably you're going to scratch it or bend it a little, but that's okay. It's just cosmetic. And that'll lift off, take out any extra glue in there. Now there's a little clip in here that you need to remove. There's a little spacer here that you can get a screwdriver in and just lift that out. But make sure that you don't lose this because it has a tendency to fly. And we should be able to start pulling the two pieces apart. Sometimes they come apart easily, sometimes they don't. This one has been taken apart quite a few times so it, it comes apart pretty easily. You can lift that off. We'll discover that there's two more screws that need to be removed. One is down here and one is over on this side. So let's remove this one first. Before you separate these two halves, you should turn it over to the dial end is up and you'll notice there's a little adhesive sticker here with an arrow on it. You might want to take a small screwdriver or a pick and lift that adhesive sticker up and save it in a safe place if you want to put it back on when you put the two halves together. Now this part will just lift off easily. Here inside is the capacitor that can carry a lethal charge even when the unit is not turned on and there's no batteries inside of it. 
We tried to discharge a little bit in the beginning, if you remember, by firing the strobe and turning it off right away, but there still can be a charge inside the capacitor. One way that I deal with that is to make up an alligator clip with a 100 ohm resistor in between the clips. Being careful not to touch the printed circuit board or the terminals on the capacitor, I can clip one side of the terminal, touch the other side. Sometimes there's a spark, but it looks like we discharged it was pretty good. You can clip on the other side, leave it on for about a minute, and that'll discharge the capacitor and put it into a safe state so that we can work on the unit without the fear of being shocked. Now if we want to take the continue taking the strobe apart, we can pull this out and we can expose two screws there. Let's take those two screws out. Then you can gently pull the front off and there's little pins in here to either side that you can release. and the unit will pull straight forward. Now be careful over here on this side, there's a little arm connected to a potentiometer and a pivot point in there, and we don't want to break that as you pull this out. But as you pull that out, it's loose, and this little lid will come off, and there's our strobe unit. And in order to take this plastic cover off, you can use a little flat screwdriver, the little tabs here, just gently lift that up a little bit, and then that plastic will come off and that exposes the strobe. I've seen a video on the internet that shows how you can take this and replace it with a regular plastic that will not block the ultraviolet light that comes out if you're into using uh, ultraviolet light strobes for special effects. So there we have it. It's taken apart. We have the strobe. We have the strobe firing circuit board, the capacitor, the battery compartment, the charging and control module, and under the battery, there's another circuit board that is part of the control boards. Uh, to put it back together, you just reverse the procedure. The only problem you might have, it's very difficult to get this little fork back onto the pivot point. It can be a little tricky trying to get this fork onto that resistor and pivot point inside here. One of the best ways I've found to do it is to remove the capacitor so that you can put your thumb on the resistor right here. Try and line up the pivot point which is right here with the pin so that it's about a 45 degree angle putting pressure on the resistor so it will not turn and then take and put the fork onto the pin and then push it onto that anchor point there on the end and then you can carefully place the sides down into the track and then as the this moves back and forth yeah it pulled out again as you can say this sometimes can be a little frustrating there we get this in the track again so that it can slide back and forth. Once you get it properly in the position, 
then you can move this back and forth. Easier said than done. And then that arm, as you can see, will move the resistor back and forth as this extends or closes. So that's how to get that in there. You can play with a little bit and I'm sure you'll figure it out. I wanted you to note that here where the hot shoe connects, there's a metal plate that sometimes falls out and you wanna make sure that the plate goes in with the whole guide there and go over the wires and then the metal screws will go into these two holes and actually screw into the plate that holds the hot shoe on there. Well, thank you. I hope you've enjoyed uh, taking apart the uh, Vivitar strobe and that you've learned something in the meantime.